worship you and we would grow together. And so that's what we endeavor to do, Lord. So bless the reading of your word. Bless all this time. May everything we've done today and going to do glorify you. Amen. 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 Oh, man. I just felt like singing a little bit today. Anybody else felt like singing? All this sunshine. I mean, just, it's just awesome. Then I walk in and there's just a, a strong feeling in this room. It's, I just, it's the Holy Spirit. It's just the Lord's just here. And the Lord's a part of our church. And uh, the Lord's blessing this church. He's going to bless this church. I'm excited about that. Uh, I want to share a couple things with you. One, um, in a couple weeks, on the 26th, I think it is, of uh, uh, January, the, the last Wednesday of January, we're going to start meeting together on Wednesday nights also. And uh, look forward to that. We're going to be working through a book called Experiencing God. Uh, and we'll have books here for you and everything uh, uh, for you to work through. And it's actually... It's a study that changed my life. Changed my life. And it's changed millions of people's lives. And we're going to go through it together every Wednesday night, in addition to some other things we're going to do on Wednesday night. It's not just like another service. It's a time we're going to grow. We're going to talk about how we're going to reach our community and our world, what kind of things God wants us to be involved in and be a part of. And I'm excited about it. We're going to disciple, we're going to mentor, but we're also going to, we're going to reach out in ways we've never reached out before. And I'm excited about that. So I hope that you'll just kind of set aside Wednesday nights as part of your, uh, your regular weekly activities. There'll be child care. If you have children that, that, um, that need child care, and we'll come together and we'll grow. And we'll grow this church, and we'll grow our core, and we'll strengthen, and we'll get stronger, and then just see what God does. Amen? Is that right with you? Can I tell you uh, about a miracle that I had happen to me? Okay. Can I start there? Um, several years ago, Five years ago, actually, this uh, is April. It'll be five years. And uh, I had written my first book, which was called Next Level Parenting. And I knew the Lord told me to write it. I was excited about writing it. I wrote it. But anybody in this room can write a book. And it doesn't mean anybody's ever going to read your book. And I wrote a book. And all I have is a book. I didn't have it. And I just had it in manuscript form. And I just knew God told me to write that book. And basically, I did every bit of research you can do on how to get your book, book published and get it in, in stores and things like that. And basically, it came down to this. You can send your proposal to every imaginable publisher, and they say, no, we will only take submissions from agents. And so I, you know, I said, okay. And I must have sent dozens and dozens out. They ran back. We won't even open it. We don't receive unsolicited proposals. Got to go to an agent. So I said, okay, well, how do I get an agent? So I did everything I could to get an agent. They said, oh, the agents all said, no, we, we don't take up published authors. <laughs> and they go, so, so they won't publish it without an agent submitting it, and an agent won't take it unless you've been published. And I went, oh, man, what am I going to do? And so I did, like I said, I did every research you can do, and I found out that there is one way that a Christian author can get a book published without an agent and without a publisher. You can publish your own book. You can pay thousands of dollars and have a company put your book in and put a cover on it, give it back to you, and they'll sell you books. That wasn't really what I was looking to do. There's this one conference. One's in New Mexico, and one is in North Carolina. South Carolina, actually. And if you can call the Blue Ridge Writers Conference. If you go to this one conference, Okay, it's like a four-day conference. If you go there, there is a room that's set up at this conference. And during the day, you can make an appointment to actually meet with agents. And that is the only time they will ever even look and consider proposals is at this conference, at these tables, in this room. I said, i got to do this. I've got to get there. So that was in, I believe, January that I signed up for it. It was scheduled to be... I wasn't even scheduled until like the first week of June. But I signed up, I got my spot. It wasn't even easy to get a spot at the conference. I got a spot at the conference. It gets closer and closer to conference time, and it's April. And now it's about the middle of April, and uh, I go on this, uh, I, uh, at that time I was flying all over the country with a, a guy I was working with, and we were putting on these huge youth conferences. I mean, one conference was 25,000 teenagers. 
and it was even big house. We take the teams of kids with us. They do all this. It's called illustrated versions. They do all this drama and all these skits. It was all centered around the pastor. He's preaching and teaching, and literally, you'd see hundreds and hundreds of teenagers come to the Lord tonight. It was amazing time. Amazing time. When I got back from one of these trips, um, about two or three days later, I started getting sick. And uh, I, got, I got real sick. And I got so sick that in about seven days, I lost 15 pounds. I was that sick. And so, uh, and, and I just couldn't stop losing weight. I couldn't stop growing up. I couldn't, stop, I couldn't keep food down hardly. It was just really, really bad. So I went to the doctor, and the doctor said, oh, yeah, you have, uh, you know, it looks like you probably have some kind of food poisoning or something. And uh, we're going to need to check that out and everything. And so, um, so they gave me some stuff that should, should take care of it. I'm supposed to get that. Three or four more days go by, I get worse. Now, I'm actually laying in my bed, and I called the doctor and said, you know what, I'm not getting better. This is getting worse. I'm starting to get a little worried. And he said, well, let's go ahead and sign you up to see a specialist on Friday. This was on a Wednesday. By Wednesday night, I was in bed, and now my feet and my hands started to curl and cramp because I was severely dehydrated. So they called and said, no, you need to get to the emergency room. So I went to the emergency room. They put five liters of the fluid stuff in. That's how much fluid I lost. They put five liters in me. They called us, the, the people specialists, they needed a bump in the front of And so that night, they gave you five liters of fluid plus something is called flagellate. And it's supposed to be the strongest stuff there is to knock out. And they said, probably what you have is some kind of um, parasite. And so, uh, and they said, they gave you the strongest stuff possible. They said, but you know what? This will do it. But you probably ought to just see that specialist just to play it safe. So, took the, and they put the stuff in me the next day. Nothing really changed. I went to the uh, to the specialist. They did all the sample stuff that they knew. And they, they came back out, and, and she walked in, and she said, Well, she goes, I got good news and bad news. I go, okay, well, just give it to me. She goes, good news is, she goes, it was, it was parasites. You had parasites. You ate something, and then parasites in it. And, uh... Uh, the good news is, is that that stuff that we're giving you, it'll knock you out, you'll be fine. I go, great. I went to bed and she goes, oh, you got cancer. And I go, I got what? And she says, you got cancer in your, uh, in your left kidney. In fact, you have a lump in your left kidney and a small lump in your right kidney. And she said, you need to get that checked out. She said, you're probably going to lose your kidney. Probably right away. So I decided to, and it's not like that on TV when they call you and sit down and say, we have to tell you this. It wasn't like that. It was just like, yeah, you got cancer. This is just what it is. You know, real informal. So they sent us to the specialist the next day, and they did all the big tests and everything for the specialist. And then we had to go back two or three days after that. And he says, yeah, he says, uh, yeah, you have, uh, you have cancer in your left kidney. And then he's got to not. Got to not as soon as possible. I said, uh, okay. And so then he sent us back to the uh, the lobby to wait. The lobby's full of people. And I'll never forget the person there. He goes, uh, he goes Rogers, cancer special, cancer thing, like just right out loud, just everything. You know, it's like the most, I've never been through a process where it's just like, this is a big deal. This is cancer. And so um, to make a long story short, uh, a big article came out in the newspaper that some, some uh, lettuce had come up from south of the border to all the Chili's restaurants. And people were getting parasites in Chili's, re Chili's restaurants all over everywhere. So that's what caused the parasites. But let me back up a little bit. I was on this youth trip prior to getting sick or close enough. I was supposed to get on the plane with all the kids, but they misbooked it and two kids weren't able to get on the plane. So, and I, went, I wanted to get home and see my daughter's softball game that night. I did not want to miss it. I had to stay back with the kids. When I stayed back with the kids at the airport in Michigan, uh, I had, we were, the flight wasn't until like 10 that night, it was 4 o'clock. So, guess what we did? We went to dinner. Guess where we went to dinner? <laughs> Chili's. And so, now you've got the whole picture. So, we've been there at Chili's. Two three days later, I get sick. All these different things happen. But in that, in that second day of the doctor, he said, you know, 
He says, you do have cancer. He says, it has to come out. He says, you know, so there's no way to take the cancer out without, you know, the whole kidney has to come out. And he says, uh, he says, no, this isn't as bad as you might think. He goes, we caught this early. He goes, but let me just tell you this. He said, had we caught this in September instead of April, you may not be alive. You, you, you may not live. He goes, it would have progressed that fast to the lungs and you would have been dead. You'd have been gone. It's called the sign of kill kidney cancer. You already know you have it. So now let's think that through. If I had missed the plane, or if I had if I had got off the plane, I was supposed to get on, correct? Then I'd have never got the parasites. And if I had got the parasites, I wouldn't have got had to see a doctor. And if the medication had worked, I wouldn't have had to go for the tougher medication. And if the tougher medication, the toughest they got, didn't kill it right away, I wouldn't have gotten to see the specialist. You see the progression? And if I hadn't gotten to see the specialist, I never would have known it was a problem. Never would have known it was a problem until it was too late. You see that? So I go in and I have my surgery and uh, they remove my left, my left kidney. And so I came out of that. And if you ever had surgery or something like that, um, they do it laparoscopically. They, they two holes, they put them out from these two little holes over here and everything. It's not like it used to be to catch your back up and do all that. But I've got to tell you, from the day that I found out that I had cancer, all the way up until, it was a period of probably five or six months, I went through one of the darkest periods I've ever gone through. I won't say five or six months, probably three or four months. And when I say dark, I, I, it's like God wasn't there. I couldn't hear his voice. I didn't feel his presence. I would pray out to him after I had that surgery. And by the way, the surgery was scheduled 10 days before the conference. The conference I had to be at. And he told me, I said, well, he, he said, you're going to do the surgery. And I said, okay, well, so, so it's on this day. So that gives me 10 days to get ready to go to the conference. He goes, you're not going to a conference. He said, you're not going to travel for two months. You're not going anywhere. And I said, oh, Lord. And so I got the diagnosis. I had the surgery, and uh, for about 10 days, 8 days, it was hell on earth. It was painful. It was, I can't even explain it. I break into cold sweats. And, you know, it just was a very difficult time. It was too difficult. I, I couldn't get done. I couldn't feel his presence. I cried out to him. It's like he wasn't there. It's like he wasn't there. And so... That made it even harder. So now it's getting closer and closer to the day of this conference. And I'm having this day of the other conference when I go, I told my wife, I said, I said, you put me in that car and you drive me to that conference. She said, I don't know. I said, I've got to go. And so she put me in the car, we laid the seat back, and we got to that conference. We got there, we got checked in the conference, I went to my room and rest. I then, as soon as I was able, I went and found that room where we did the sign ups to see the people. I got to that room and every appointment was full. There were no more appointments. There was nothing. And I said, I go, listen, I, I talked to the person in charge. I said, um, there's got to be some way I can talk to someone. She said, there's only one way. She says, you can stand right here, and if somebody misses an appointment, you can have their 15 minutes. Me 